Hi everyone, in this video, we're gonna look at exporting using the new-ish adaptive high bitrate or adaptive medium or adaptive low. It's pretty cool. Let's jump in and figure out what it does. So have a sequence selected. I'm gonna hit Command M or Control M on a PC. Okay, and up the top here, you've probably all been using match source high bitrate. This is uh, when you're exporting the H.264 codec. Okay, wrapped in a MP4. Okay, so when you are using these, yeah, we use these quite a lot because it's the default. Defaults are good. But how do I get the best out of my footage, okay, without having to think too much? Or at least maybe you're new-ish to this export uh, game. Okay, and bit rates and megabytes per second and variable bit rates are all kind of new-ish and a little bit confusing. Uh, so that is fine. Like if I use high bit rate, you're like, great, it's gonna be high quality. And it's going to, you can kind of see it down the bottom here. Okay, under video tab, you can see here it's using the bit rate of 10, okay? And that's basically, yeah, basically the quality that's gonna come out of it. How good is it going to be? It's also connected to the file size. So at the moment using that standard one, I'm gonna have 90 megabytes. If I make it mahusive, okay, it's gonna be 94 and the quality is going to be better. How much better? It will depend on my original footage. If I am shooting, you know, that's stock library footage, I've messed with it a lot. It's not going to be, you know, what's that? Like four times the size, five times? I can't count. Uh, but it's not gonna be five times better. It's gonna be hard to decide the difference between 10 and that 50. It's gonna be heaps bigger though. And that's for 15 seconds. It balloons when it gets to a documentary. So how do I know what is good for this? Because 10 can't be good for every single thing, surely. It's not. That's where adaptive is really good. So format is H.264. Okay, where's this preset? Have a look at adaptive, high, low, and medium. Okay, we're gonna start with high. And what it does is it actually looks at your current sequence, the height, the width, what frame rate you're using, and decides on the target. You can see the target here is instead of 10, it's 15. I'm gonna show you the kind of like the summary up here instead of scrolling all the way down here somewhere. Okay, so it's decided that it's gonna use 15.2. It's decided that that, based on what you've got, is the best adaptive high bit rate. The file size is gonna be bigger. It's not up to the 90 like it was when we cranked it all the way up. But now I can hit export or Q, knowing that Premiere Pro is kind of helped me out. And especially when you are newest to this stuff, you can start kind of seeing like, okay, whenever you're doing HD stuff at a frame rate of 25 frames per second, it's around the 15. So that later on, you can not be reliant on whatever this says, and you can actually start typing in yourself and go, hi, yeah. All right, a bit rate of 15 is pretty good for HD at 25 frames per second. And you start getting your own kind of remembered, known, worked for you in the past quality settings. Let's have a look. So that was 15.2. If I go and change the frame rate for this one, so let's say this one here, this one's at 23.97. Let's change it from that to, let's have it selected over here. It's got a sequence settings. Let's change it to 25 frames per second. And let's see what it does to that adaptive. Okay, so it was at 15.2. Let's have a look at it now. Go to adaptive high and it says it's 15.9 not a big change so frame rate we only change from a couple of frames to another let's go up to something like 60 frames per second so have a look sequence settings let's go to 60. at the moment the highest that uh premier pro can export strange but true okay and here now let's go to adaptive high you can see it's a lot higher so you can get a sense for okay increase the frame rate and it's more than doubled the suggested target megabytes per second to kind of retain some of that quality that you've got baked into your sequence. I find this super useful. I use it all the time. Again, let's do something else. Let's say this one here now is, so the sequence is going to be like a square one. Okay, 10, we'll change the frame rate back to what it was originally. Okay, so I've got my square video, same thing, Command M, Control M on a PC. Let's go to adaptive high bit rate. You can see eight. You're like, okay, it doesn't all have to be 16 or 32 or 50. Okay, I can get a sense of what's going on with this adaptive high bit rate. It's gonna do the same with medium and low. Okay, depends on what your kind of final output. Is it drafts? Is it a final output? Is it going to social? Where's it going? Same with something like 4K. Uh, that can be confusing. Like what, what should it be? Because these uh, file sizes can balloon when it comes to uh, 4K. I've got this one we did earlier. It's our... Uh, Remember him? From way Sorry. back in the course. So long ago. Road rise up to meet you. <laughs> and uh, running really slowly. I should turn my proxies on. I'm not going to. I'm going to export it. And I'm going to say, what do you end up looking like as a high bitrate? 
okay? And it's gonna end up at 60. And I'd say that's bang on for 4K at our uh, 23.976 frames per second. That's about perfect. Premiere Pro agrees. The only trouble is it's gonna be reasonably big, but it's a reasonably good file, okay? So it needs to be big. Okay, you can go to low, okay? Coving down that size there. Oh, down to 83 again. The quality is gonna be pretty poor here, but gonna be fast to render, fast to watch, easy to email. It sucks when you send somebody to review like a, you know, a seven gigabyte file to load through Dropbox or whatever way you're sharing things. But if you use the old school way, well not the old school, just the, give me a high bit rate. It just guesses at 10 megabytes per second. And yeah, I think you're doing a disservice to your, uh, the quality of your video if you end up at 10 megabytes per second. Really small file, seems high, but not high enough. I guess I also should note that H.264 is not a great codec for your final high quality anyway. Okay, you wanna be using, I don't know, everyone has their preferences. For me, I prefer on a Mac, QuickTime, and using either the ProRes 2, uh, 422 or using the GoPro Cineform. Okay, probably this one, YUV. It depends on where you're going and if they've asked for a specific codec, so you can fall in line with what they're doing. But for social, most of the things at the moment, H.264, in my humble opinion, is a great codec, for export anyway. You'll notice that QuickTime doesn't have the adaptive in here. It's very regimented. All right, uh, H.264, adaptive, it's awesome, I love it. it. can help educate you about what should be good and just leave it to the computer. Also remember, remember adaptive was way back here when we did quick export, okay? That's why it's kind of in here. It's new for Adobe, it's better than uh, the kind of fixed high bit rate. They're going, let us do the job for you. But I bet you they'll all appear in here in some stage. All right, adaptive bit rate. Let's get on to the next video.